Happy New Year, everybody. I'm Mark W. Gray here with a new tutorial to help you do virtual reality video in the new year in hopefully a whole new way. Now, 360 video is not new. It's been around for a couple of years. But now there's a lot of cameras that can do it in 4K, which is really a good idea. Now, the problem I've always had with 360 video is it's cool to put on the goggles and look around, but then to have to get up and turn around and look behind you to see the whole story is kind of annoying. And it's a lot more production work to do the whole back of the video. So what I'm favoring now is 180 VR, where you get a 180 degree field of view, and you don't worry about what's behind. You can put the crew back there, and you still get a real immersive experience for the viewer, but keeping them facing the direction you want them to face, which is one step closer to actual storytelling filmmaking. Now to do that, I've taken my PixPro camera, which is two cameras that go back to back, and I have put them side by side. And I sell this mount on my website, rocketpictures.net slash 3D. You mount the two cameras side by side, and they function just like eyes. You get one video for the right eye, one video for the left eye, and each one has a panoramic 180 degree vertical and horizontal field of view. So when you put the goggles on, you can look all around and get the real experience of immersion. Now, if you want to do full 360 in 3D, you've got to use a different kind of camera because your two eyes, you need a camera for each eye at each point on the compass. And to do that, there are special camera rigs that work for that and they're pretty amazing, but they're very expensive. This is not very expensive. And you don't have to program the whole back that no one's ever going to look at anyway. Now a 360 video is a sphere of video that wraps around your head. Now just like a map of the Earth is made flat off of a globe by peeling it off to an equirectangular shape, the video works the same way. The spherical video is flattened out into a one by two equirectangular, one unit high, two units across, video that makes it into a sphere. Now, uh, if you wanted 3D normally, you had to have one of those for the left eye and one of them for the right eye. That's what's called top-bottom 3D. That's what you're going to find on YouTube. But doing top-bottom 3D, if you're just doing the 180, means you've got a square for your left eye here, a square for your right eye here, and then a bunch of black on the side that you're wasting. And instead of a 4K video, you've got to make an 8K video, which is a lot more bandwidth, and you're wasting that space on the sides. I put a logo back there, or a website or something, or just the words, turn it around, you're looking the wrong way. But last summer, YouTube announced at VidCon that they're doing 180 side-by-side -side VR, where you have the left eye here and the right eye here, without wasting all that black. It's a much more logical way to do it. They're still stretched out, so they give you a 180 dome view, but there's one for each eye. Now, I've heard some scuttlebutt that this week at CES, Google is finally going to announce how to inject that metadata. Because been, I've been able to make these side-by-side -side videos for a year, but I still don't have the metadata to inject to make it work on YouTube. But they already work on another portal called Veer, which is available right now, which I'll show you how to get on very soon here. It's actually a better viewing experience than the YouTube VR uh, viewer, I think. Anyway, let's get down to business. I'll show you how, once you shoot like this, you can get your VR into the side-by-side -side format at half the bandwidth and a lot fewer steps than doing it the old way. I'll show you how that works in a second. I already shot a bunch of footage at the IMAX VR Center down by Farmer's Market in Los Angeles, and I've already downloaded it into the computer, and I'll now show you how to sync it all up. Okay, on each micro SD card, there's a folder that has a number of the camera. This one's 101M28R3. Now, I've got two folders here with the same name. That's because, at the moment, these two cameras have the same identity, 101M. That's because the uh, batteries died and the even the internal sort of backup battery of the cameras died over a long period of time. So they lost track of the time in the calendar. So I had to set the time before I started shooting. Every time you take the card out of the camera, blank it out and stick it back in, it changes the number. So the next time you roll, it'll be 102. I've actually done that on just one of those now. So next time, it'll be 102 and 103, which makes it easier to tell left from right. But right now, they both say 101. And then all the files also are called 101, and they're numbered 1, 2, 3, 4. Now because I could take a look at it, and I could see the left side, there's the lens, okay? That means this is the right eye. And over here, the corresponding shot, 
from the other camera, that's the left eye because it has the camera on the right, you see? Now, one thing I like to do just right away is I take all the right eyes and I tag them red, right eye red. That's just my personal code. Then I take all the left eyes and I call them left eye blue, just because red blue is sort of the traditional uh, 3D glasses color from the 50s. Now, these, now, if I were to take all of these and put them in the same folder, they would all have the same names. It would be a problem. So, But I could rename them. Like I can take all of these. There's a great function here. I could hold down the control key and click, or basically right click, and I get this menu. And I can rename all these items. So these, are the, these are the left eye. Then I'm going to add an L. I could add it at the beginning, but I think I'm going to add it at the, at the end because I want them all to stay in alphabetical order just by their number. So if I rename, then I have 101, number 1L, 2L, 3L, 4L, like that. I can do the same thing for the right eye. Again, control click or right click, rename, and I'm going to add a letter R after the name of each file. Okay. Now I can take all of the files and dump them into the same folder. And they automatically sort themselves out. So shot one is together, shot two is together, shot three. So there's shot four. See, that's the left eye. And shot five is the right eye. You see, they're almost identical, except the lens is on one side or the other. So now I have these pairs, and I want to stitch the pairs together. And for that, I use Codex stitching software, VR360 PixPro. This is the older version, the, stitch, Pix, the PixPro stitch software. That's the older version. The new version is the one that they came out with their Orbit camera, which I did another tutorial about recently. It's a little bit newer, it's a little bit better. So you choose Stitch right here. Then you choose the, the shot that you want to stitch together. Like that's the thing, is you don't have to stitch all of them. You don't want to waste time stitching the ones you don't want to use in your show. Like let's say I want to stitch this file, this shot together. I take the left and the right of number seven and I just drag it over here and drop it in. And now that I've started it, I can't move this panel again, so it pays to put it somewhere where it's out of your way so you can do other work sometimes. But there, the one is going to be the left eye, the other one's going to be the right eye. I say OK to that. And now this is meant to adjust the stitch, but I don't want that. I just want to stitch it geometrically. So the left eye is one half of the sphere, and the right eye is the other half of the sphere. You can adjust your in and out points here for how much or how little of the shot you want to uh, add in. And be sure to audio sync it, which listens to the audio and makes sure that both the left and right eye are perfectly synchronized. See, it's one frame off like that. Then when you're ready, you hit export. Then you have to browse to where you want to save it, write a name for it, etc. Now this is still a very tiresome process to stitch these files together because you have to do it for each one. Even though it's exactly the same process every time, you've still got to sync each one up, name each one, and put it in the right place. This has gotten a little better than their last version, but there's still no way to, to batch do it. Uh, anyway, you'll figure this out for yourself. I've already done this, so you don't have to watch me go through it all, and I've already got a folder full of stitched files right here, which, as you can see, looks something like this, where, in this case, the right eye is in the middle and the left eye is on both sides, okay? So now we're going to start a new project in Final Cut Pro. Normally I would do all this in Premiere because Premiere already has Metal built in, which is all the 360 tools with no extra parts to be purchased. But now Final Cut Pro, in their last incarnation around December, has added in a bunch of cool 360 tools which are going to make this just as easy. Now 360 files are large and you might not want to hang on to them forever, so I'm going to create a new library that I can just throw away when I'm finished with it called Stereo Tutorial. cap lock wasn't totally necessary. And then I can import the media. Stereo tutorial, stitched files, and there they all are. And you can preview them. So I'll select them all and import them. Okay, now I want to make a new timeline, just like you normally would, Apple N for a new timeline. So what am I going to call this on YouTube? This is just me and the kids going to the IMAX VR uh, facility. Let's call it IMAX VR. That's kind of a clickbaity title. 
and then I can take my files and just drop them right in. There's one of me. Hi, welcome to 3D Stereo Photography. That's pretty good. So we'll drop that one in, just the letter E. And I see it's all it's automatically formatted this show into the right shape, which is 3840 by 1920. And it's a 360 video, okay? So it's set up to be a 360 video looking all the way around. So then I have that shot. I want to add another shot. And again, I can just set my in points wherever I want. Anyway, then you go on and you edit your entire project, adding in all the shots that you want. This is us walking down the street. And you can just watch it as you normally would. Now, if I were to put this on now, I could export this and put it uh, directly onto um, Veer or onto YouTube, and it would work. It would give me a sphere, but it would be the same shot on the front and the back, just different by, you know, 30, 53 millimeters. But I want to do a side-by-side -side shot. So what I want to do is adjust it. And there's a certain set of tools that are right here under the 360 panel. And basically, we want to move it around. You've got a patch where you can move things to cover up, uh, which is very handy. You can blur the whole thing in 360 in a way that wraps around so it looks nice even on the seam. These are all the effects, aura, sharpen, all that jazz. But those aren't what we need. What we need is the normal uh, reorient, which is up here. Just like you can uh, move stuff around, X, Y, Z, it's called reorient here. So if we want to uh, tilt, we could tilt the circle around like that. If you want to pan, we can move it around like that. But basically, we want to keep it square, and we just want to pan around like that. But we want, see, this is the right eye, so we want the right eye to go to the right. So we want it to go this way. And what we want is minus 90 degrees, just like this, minus 90. We could say 270 to do the same thing. But now, this is the right eye, and this is the left eye. Right eye, left eye. We put that in a side-by-side -side viewing situation and we'll get a virtual reality model. In fact, I will export this so and put a link below so you can then see it on your phone and look at it in, in 180 VR. Very simple. Now, I've done that effect there and it's got to render it, that offset. I could do it again here, same deal. Just go into pan Y and say minus 90 degrees. And again, I got the right eye there and the left eye there, so both lenses are sort of in the middle. You can kind of see that if I zoom way in. There's both lenses in, in the middle there. This is a 4K view, so it's very sharp. There's a lot of pixels in there. But my computer, my six-year-old computer, can still handle this, though the fans are starting to blow. It's starting to really think about things. Now, a neat trick you can do is you can just copy, like this, Apple C, Command C, and select all of the other clips and then do shift command V and you can paste the attributes. What I do is paste the 360 transform in there. So now all of these look right and the left and right are separated just like that. Okay? Perfecto. Now we want to export that. We send a compressor I have Apple E for Command E to go send a compressor, which I like to use. Now, 4K is not exactly right. We want 360. You hold on the Control key and click it, and you can duplicate and make another one, which then you which you can then edit. So I've got 4K VR, which I've already set up here. The custom frame size I've done, I need an equirectangular rectangular 2x1, 3840 by 1920 That's the full width of 4K and 1920 pixels high. And default pixel aspect for frame size. Frame rate's automatic, color space is automatic. The 360 metadata is spherical, okay? Because they do not yet have the side by side, but soon they will. And again, I'll show you how to fix that on Veer in a moment. Once that's all done, now I've got to actually select the codec that I want and place it on there. It'll go back to the source like the videos uh, folder, which always drives me crazy. I like to have a special destination where I know 
where it's going to go. Then once that's done, you just hit start batch and you're off to the races. And that could take an hour or more to do that three minute video because it had, it's 4K and it's an old, old, old computer. Before we export, I want to show you another couple of cool things that this new Apple software can do. Like it has 360 text. If I want to put like a lower third, like my name under here, I can just go over here to the titles and I could choose titles and right there 3D 360 custom 3D. So I can just take that and drag it in. So right there I want my name to appear Mark W. Gray right below. So I select that and over here in the text tool I can type what I want. Just like that. And I can make it you know any font that I want. Let's try American Captain. That's a cool font. Excellent. And I can make it bigger, smaller, or whatever. Now it's right in the middle. That's where it defaults. But I can adjust it. Okay. I can, besides like rotating it and making it 3D like that, and I can animate that, which I'm not really going to do. I just want it to sort of appear. But I want it to appear below me. So I'll drag it down a little bit like that. So people can have to look down and they'll see Mark Gray below me. But again, this is set up for just normal 360, but I've got to trick it into giving it me the thing for both eyes. So I'm going to use, instead of these rotational things here, actually we'll just put those all back to zero. I'm going to go to the whole frame. It'll take the whole flat frame where that's in the middle and it'll rotate that around the shape just how I want it. So first I want to pan it around to be by me, so I'll say negative 90. So I'll get it 90 degrees over there so it's on me. And then I will roll it down below just like that. Now when you're watching this you can look down and it'll be right in front of you, in front of me. Now but the thing is you're only going to get that in your right eye right now, I want that in your left eye. So I'm going to hold the option key and make a copy so that copy, I want to go into the left eye. So I'll make it plus 90 degrees. So it's over there, but it's up. So then I've got to go positive 30.3 to match it the same way. You see? Now here's the thing though. Those are both dead center 90 degrees, okay, for each eye. Now, if something's closer, it should look farther to the right in the left eye and farther to the left in the right eye. So you see when I pick up this cup of coffee, that's the furthest forward thing. I want it to be ahead of that. Okay, I want it to be out in front of that. So I can use this thing I see on screen, like the corner of the coffee cup there. So my right eye, it's got to be farther left than it is for my left eye. Right? So for my left eye, I've got to move it farther right. Okay? So I'm going to move it to the right a little bit. Just like that, so the R is hitting the bottom of the cup. And then for my right eye, I want to move it farther left. So that the so that the right side of the R is hitting the cup there. That way it's just a little bit closer to me than that cup. So I think if I do this properly, it'll end up three-dimensionally closer to me than where the cup is there. I'll be very impressed to see if this works. I'm very excited. I think it'll be really fun. Then I'll put a little Command T to make it fade in and fade out there. Just so they appear and go away. There are a lot of cool 360 tools to play with on here. I'm just beginning to figure them out for myself. Uh, they're, I think, as good as the ones in Premiere. So far, so good, as near as I can tell. Let's see how it looks when we get them out. Hopefully, they'll be the next level that'll let you do all these things in uh, 3D side by side. Now, if we were doing top-bottom 3D, it would automatically move it around for you. And you'd be able to, it would move them both together and give you one for each eye. But since we're just doing side-by-side -side 3D, we are ahead of Apple on this. So, let's just see how it turns out. Anyway, now to export. All right, exporting is taking a little while, but I want to go ahead and show you about how Veer works. Basically, you go to Veer, which is this great website that's just all about VR. Get yourself an account and click Upload, okay? And then you just choose the file you want to upload. It's really 
as simple as that. And then once you've uploaded it, this is the key, this is what makes it cool, is you get a control panel that looks like this. This is a test I uploaded the other day. Uh, you can write the name, you can write the description, but you can also do the format. Like 360 by 180 is normal equirectangular 360, but 180 by 180 is just this, what we're talking about here, the front-facing panorama. Then you can choose 2D, 3D top-bottom, like you would if you were doing the old-fashioned kind, or 3D side-to-side. -side. You choose that, and there's no extra codec or metadata to inject. It just works perfectly on Veer, which is V-E-E-R dot TV, not dot com. That's a Chinese website. This is also a Chinese website, but they're, it's all in English, and, they, and they're very nice. And I think this is really the one that's going to stick around. And hopefully YouTube will get some ideas from this where you can just say, oh, it's side by side. Boom. Uh, now, very soon, hopefully, there'll be a codec that you can inject or a, a metadata that you can inject using spatial metadata injector. Just Google that, spatial metadata injector. That's what exists now to inject that 360 metadata into your rectangular file so YouTube knows what to do with it. They still don't know what to do with the side-by-side -side file, and they refuse to tell me uh, what to inject. But until then, just do it on Veer. And when uh, YouTube comes out with an update, maybe this week after CES, I will let you know. All right, check the description for a link to my Veer channel where you can watch the video that we just did, or just look for M.W. Gray, same as the name of this YouTube channel, on Veer, and you will find me there. Okay, thanks a lot. Be sure to ask questions and share this and do all the social stuff you're supposed to do, like, subscribe, and all that jazz. And if you really want a hub to find all of my 3D VR stuff, all of my 360 VR stuff, all the parts that I sell, including this incredibly bitchin' lens cap holder that's magnetic and comes in two pieces, just go to rocketpictures.net slash 3D, and there are links to all my videos there and uh, my store where you can buy all this stuff. All right. Happy New Year. I'll see you at CES.